Hello and welcome to a new video. In today's video I will be trying out another box from Upcrate. Unfortunately this box did arrive in slightly damaged condition but thankfully the post office people who were delivering it wrapped it in a bag so everything inside it stayed completely safe. For this box I am trying out box 52 that is from November last year. It comes with the art supplies here wrapped in this bag um, or wrapped in this tissue tissue wrap that unfortunately broke a little bit. So you can see here this box came with five pens. This one here is a Pigma Micron which I have used a lot in the past and I really love. As well as four Pantone markers from Royal Talons. These are water-based markers and we get four different colours, two yellows and two purples. Here are some stickers they've included of the artist feature of this month as well as an A6 art pad that I will be trying out these pens on. Then a small booklet just including some information about the artist themselves, as well as a really lovely print. I really, really like this art. It looks really free and just fun. Um, and I'm actually really, really happy that they've included stickers of it. I do actually have a discount code for you guys, which is ST30. And this gives you guys a 30% discount on the first subscription box, which is so kind of Upcrate. And I will also be leaving that in the description below. So Upcrate is a German based art subscription box. And each month they send out a box like this one featuring a range of art tools and mediums, as well as a featured artist that has used the supplies that are included in the box you receive. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat in the background, he is, he's just being a noise, a noisy little guy, he's just cleaning himself right now. But yes, as I mentioned, each box features an artist and you can go on the, the website using the QR code included in the little booklet to read a bit more about the artists themselves as well as more about the supplies that you've received and the companies that make them. It also gives you some ideas on how to use the items themselves. So starting off, you know that I have to swatch them out and I'm using the book they sent as well so then I can also get a gauge of how good this paper is and how each of the items work on it. So the pens come with a brush nib as well as a chisel nib and the Pigma Micron is in this like purple bordering on blue which I really really like and I also decided that I was going to use the swatch sheet to just mess around a little bit so I'm just going straight in with the pen um, I thought it would be quite fun to not have a sketch and just go straight in with the pen um, because it is really fun and a little stressful but usually it's worth it and seeing as this is October I decided to go with a couple pumpkins in just a little pumpkin patch and yeah this was really fun it was also a really good way to um to get my mind in the mood I wanted to try and stick similarly to the artist's style so I thought this would be a great easy way to just experiment with it and also um, as you can probably tell, I have my wrist brace on because my wrist was going through a flare up. So it was a really fun way to, this style was just like a really good thing for my wrist because I, I was trying to be really carefree with it all. And that helps because I physically cannot bend my wrist that well while wearing this brace, which is the whole point. Um, it's to stop me from bending my wrist so that I don't hurt it, um, which makes making art very difficult but uh yeah making this style of art was still really really fun despite being physically limited and it also was a really good way to just like get a grasp on how to use these colors with each other and just try and get a feel for the artist's style it was also really challenging to just use four colors especially since they are like shades of each of each other so you've got like a yellow and then a kind of dark yellow slash green and then a purple and a dark purple so with that in mind I was trying to just keep the picture itself quite simple because you can layer the colors over each other as as you'll see when they cross over each other they kind of create newish colors but they are basically pretty similar the colors they make so yeah it was fun experimenting how to try and use the limited colors to create an actual scene. So for the most part, I saved the purples for just shading 
so the light purple just becomes shading for pretty much everything else and then the darker purple i will use later for like really really dark shading but otherwise the yellow works as a decent pumpkin obviously it's not orange so it isn't like a perfect pumpkin color but i think it is like really close so i think that works and then i used the dark green for the foliage I was initially planning to use the dark green for the shading of the pumpkin but then I thought that might look a little tame and I thought it would be really interesting to have the shading be that light purple um, especially since I then used the purple to shade the foliage as well so I thought doing it that way makes it very clear that all the shading is shading <laughs> Um, I also felt it gave the picture kind of like a vibe, like a, um, what's the word? I'm not sure actually what the word I'm looking for. I had it and I've completely lost it, but it, I feel like it makes it all feel like it's within the same space. So then after I was adding the foliage, I decided to also just draw in some other blocks of the dark green yellow thing because I thought it was actually lacking foliage it could have done with some more and then having them not all be lined, I thought created like a nice contrast. So then I went in with the dark purple because it needed grounding because it was just floating at that point in time and it also does yeah it, it creates the image of this is the ground but also maybe it's shadows and then I went over that again with the dark green because those two colors layered created quite a dark color yeah so it gave me more possibilities and because they are water based markers they layered over each other like really really nicely obviously they're not opaque but because they are transparent, you can create more colors with them. And then I wanted to add a sort of yellow background behind it all because again, it looked kind of random. And I really, really like this because I feel like it makes it all look like a sort of twilight evening time in this image, which screams spooky to me. And then I went in with some more of the Pigma Micron just to give some more details. And also because it was quite a dark color, it would create more contrast and I also wanted to just outline some things and make them stand out just typically how I like to do with my drawings and I'm really really pleased with how this turned out considering it was just meant to be an experiment to get a grasp on how to use these items I'm really really pleased with this this little page And then of course I wanted to add some stars because I've been really into just throwing stars onto everything. It's a problem. I can't stop doing it, but it just gave it more of like a personal touch. Um, and it also gave it more of a print vibe, like less of a, this is supposed to look like a real study and more of this is supposed to be like a art thing. I don't know how to explain it, but I just really like throwing the stars on there. It just made it look really cute and I really love stars. So then I, you know, I wanted to do another piece and I was really impressed. Again, these are water-based markers, so I wasn't expecting it to bleed through necessarily, but I was still impressed that like nothing bled through, not even the Pigma Micron, which sometimes they can when you use them a lot, which I did when I was like thickening the lines. For the next piece, I wanted to stick to the Halloween themes so I decided to draw a I think it's like fairly famous I see I saw loads of people redrawing it at one point but that scene from Scream because that is one of my favorite Halloween films with Stu and Billy <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure none of you are surprised to see it again because yeah everyone was drawing it at one point but I have never drawn it before and I thought this would be a great time to draw it but yeah because I've never drawn it before and I feel like I haven't drawn people realistically for a while I I could in no way <laughs> draw this straight away with pen so I went in with pencil and yeah I'm very glad I did because there were a lot of mistakes initially I was really struggling with it trying to make it look like them and I think by the end it does look like them a little bit but it uh it's very much uh, 
a style thing, I guess. But yeah, it was very fun. Um, I had just watched the film the night before drawing this, I think. It's such a Halloween film and it just really worked to get me in the vibe for October because I have been bordering on the edge of, of spooky vibes but it wasn't until I like watched this that I like tipped over into it. And I've also been reading some horror books lately, so I am like fully, I am in the mindset. <laughs> um, and I'm really, I'm loving it. I think October is my favorite month of the year, my favorite time of the year, because it's starting to get chilly. You can start wearing jumpers and blankets and it's just nice to get all cozy with a scary film. Although I wouldn't say Scream is necessarily scary, it's more like a, a satire film, but it is really, really fun. Um, and the first one is my favourite of them all, for sure. It's just, it's perfect. Yeah, I, I just really wanted to draw them. And I did struggle quite a bit with Stu, especially since the placement in this image isn't, it's not perfect. So I did, um, I changed a few things to make them fit, but you know, it ended up being fine, but I really struggled with his face and I don't really know why. So then I lightly rubbed everything out so that I could see the line work but not have the graphite interrupt the pen and then I started lining most of the lines. Um, I decided to try and leave it quite minimal. Um, obviously I wanted to line the important lines and such but I didn't want there to be too much because I wanted to have most of the like framework of the face be um, be coloured, be from the colours and the shading and stuff. So I tried not to line too much. So it does look really, really weird initially because obviously there are a lot of important shapes from the face missing. And I was starting to feel like, oh, have I made a mistake? Because this looks really, really freaky because people without their, like, their face shapes is very, um, very freaky to look at. But I was like, you know, this is a trust the process kind of thing. So I just just do it. And I really enjoyed using this pen. It is a size one, which was actually perfect because it meant I could get a lot of small detail, but I could also do a lot of bigger stuff. So I feel like this is the perfect size they could have sent because you can get some really, really small sizes of these pens, but this one was like perfect for this size drawing. Oh yeah. And with Billy's eyes, I was trying because my plan was to not use any items outside of this box and for the most part I do stick with that so I was trying to leave a glint in his eyes just a small dot of white but unfortunately when I did then block the eyes in I kind of smushed the block on on the left eye on his right eye but our left so later I, I will be going in with a white gel pen just to fix that but otherwise you could just pretend that I did it right the first time <laughs> And then after lining, I rubbed everything out, which is when everyone was looking a bit too smoothed faced. And I was very nervous to start because adding all the shadows in, it was tricky just trying to figure out which colors I should use for what parts of the face. So for most of the like dark shadows, I went with the lighter purple. And then I wanted to go in with the yellow and do that as like the sort of mid tones because what the artist of the month did, Jenny Adam, she used the white of the page as well within her pictures to create a sort of like fifth color, you know, a fifth 
tone so I was trying to be aware of that so um, the highlights I just leave a sort of white and it was very interesting because you have to be very mindful of the spaces which I was I was very struggling with but yeah I also quite liked the messy look of it so I let the pens overlap and create the third colour <laughs> between them um, which might not necessarily be correct, they might not need that colour, but I did really like how like the messy vibe looked with it, so yeah, it was really fun to just experiment with them, because I typically, when I'm colouring things, I let myself have a very broad range of colours, definitely more than four, usually, so it was it was a fun challenge and because obviously these colours were picked for the box I was like trusting and which helped I was trusting that someone knew that these colours worked together which they did obviously by how Jenny Adam used them in her pieces so that took a lot of pressure off because when I then go to sometimes in the past limit myself by choosing colours myself it can be quite tricky to pick them out and uh, typically they don't look great together or I've limited myself too much but these colours were perfect they they create a very good range within themselves so yeah it was just it was very fun so at this point I am adding the dark purple and I'm just using it to add the shadows in the hair um, and I also used it for the blood on Billy's face and the shadow under Stu's neck because Otherwise, um, I didn't really need to use it that much, I don't think. And then also I added a yellow background because I didn't want to leave it just white. And in the original picture, the background behind them is a very light colour. So I kind of wanted that to come across in my picture. I do think that it was... Uh, I, I was struggling a little bit because I thought there was then too much yellow on the page. So you will see that um, I, I mess around with the background a bit after I've finished like th thickening up the lines around them because I was hoping that would fix it. But in the space between Stu and the left side of the page, I start hatching in a messy background so that the yellow shows through. But then I was like, that was very much a mistake. It's too loud. Um, so I, I'd leave that section behind him and I actually outline him with the white gel pen which by this point I've already added to their eyes as well and the white outline helped a lot <laughs> because of the the uh, the background behind him shouldn't have looked like that but I then also decided I kind of liked it being over there so I was just messing around with the background I added a sort of outline around Billy and then I added my stars because I wanted to just have fun with it and I think it was a really good idea it now looks like a really fun piece I think it looks like I had fun making it while I was editing I did notice this little patch down here that I do want to add some yellow to because this is actually his skin and I was worried that leaving it makes it look like it's his top so I just wanted to add that in so yes this is what I've made with the box yeah I want to say a huge thank you to Upcrate for sending me another box to try out and making that code for you guys that's so thoughtful of them a thank you to everyone who has made it this far in the video I hope you're all having a lovely spooky October and a huge thank you to my patreons Dispy, Megan Palmer, Grim Clow, The Waffle of Life, Non-Toxic, Saint Nix, LP, Kira May, K, Joanna, Sir Studdalot, Mila, VB, Pretty Rotten, Crescent Frog, Joanna Snake Moon, Humble Frogs, Local Fish Keeper, Mold Ghoul, Art Mancy, Farrarware, Sun Arts, Molly Marula, Scout Radley, Sammy Bear 127, Kenzania, Jade S, Arrow, Charlie, Malarus, Ghosty, Jess H30, Cindy King, Vlada, Art by Lavender, a Woodsy, Rainbow Tea, Breaded Nuggets, Neva Thorpe, Lindsay, Human Eye, The Moth Bug, Knox, Thresher, Cat Bird House, The Tormented Shadow, Sweet and Hopeless, Pocket, Cool Desert 525, Misfit, Jordan's Tiny Planet, Cheesy Rosebutt, The Coffee Rain, Black Jackal Art, Layla Loves You, Halachu, Faith, A Wendu, and Cosa Scobs. Thank you guys so much for all your constant support and hopefully I will have another video out for you guys soon.